Every year as the fire season approaches, we have to sort through our things. Just in case there's a forced evacuation, what do we have to take? I get a bag and put some old photos and old documents and other things that can't be reproduced. And anything that I think is really necessary to keep, put it in a bag. It's right next to the door. If an evacuation order comes, and pick it up and it's easy to go. A lot easier than if I waited till the fire was there and had to sort through things and decide what was worthwhile and what was not to take. And the same principle applies to all of us. Aging, illness, and death come. And when, especially when death approaches, it's like an evacuation order. You've got to go. And if you haven't had any practice in putting things down and deciding what's not necessary to take with you, you find yourself trying to clutch at all kinds of things, many of which will just slip through your fingers. And what often happens is you grab at the wrong things, and the things that really are good to take get left behind. This is why we practice. So we can sort through what's really of value in our minds and what's not. When you sit and meditate, get into concentration, you have to put a lot of things aside, even though it's just for the time being. But it's good practice, because you learn an important principle that the mind is not made wealthy by holding on to lots of things. It actually puts itself in better shape by letting go. There's a greater sense of wholeness to the mind itself. In other words, the mind increases its own value the less it holds on to other things. Of course, when we practice in concentration, we don't totally let go. We focus on what we're doing right now. And that's an important point. And John Sawat liked to stress this a lot. The Buddha says so many things are not self, not self, not self. But your actions are your own. We are the owners of our actions. And those are the things you want to hold on to. You want to hold on to your ability to do skillful things, make skillful choices. So right now the skillful choice is to stay in the present moment, stay with the object of your meditation, and learn to develop a sense of ease around it, a sense of well-being around it, both so that it's a good place to stay. And then you get a greater sense of the, the worth of the mind on its own. What it can do is a lot more important than what it can hold on to, or what it can try to take or try to lay claim to. Because actions are an interesting kind of possession. You do them and you don't have to hold on to them. They're there. The result of the action is going to be there. So you just keep focusing on holding on to the mindfulness that reminds you to act skillfully, and the conviction that re this really does make a difference. The Buddha talks about the different strengths of the mind, and the number one strength is, dis is discernment, this ability to let go of things that are not necessary. It makes it a lot easier to go around if you're not loaded down with like the old grandmother, they say in Thailand, the old grandmother who carries a big load of straw. Everywhere she goes, she's got this big load of straw on her back. And people ask her, you know, why are you carrying that big load of straw? She says, I, I may need it someday. But it turns out she never gets to use it. It's there just in case, but she's loaded down and with a big load of straw on her back that she can't pick up other things of value. So we each have to go through our lives and look at what kind of loads of straw we're carrying around. And some of them are things that we really hold dear. Our relationships to our family, our relationship with our friends. Our old memories of good times. 
when the time comes to go, you have to let, the, let these things go. And whatever karma you have with your family and friends, that'll get you back together again. You don't have to hold on to that. But it's your, your memory for the good times you had. You, those are very painful memories at that point. So those are things you want to put down. So you learn how to put them down right now. This is why discernment on its own is not enough. The five qualities that go with discernment that support it are conviction, persistence, mindfulness, and concentration. The conviction that your actions really do matter, and that you have the ability to take this principle of action, which explains why we suffer. And you can learn how to master it so you don't have to suffer. Even though you may have done unskillful things in the past, you can still figure out how you don't have to suffer from them. Persistence is sticking with the conviction that you've got to act skillfully right now. Regardless of what you've done in the past, you can act skillfully now. And you realize the law of karma is not like a, a those parking laws they have in the, in the city, where on this side of the street, on this day of the week, you can park, but on other days of the week you can't park. The law of karma is 24-7, so you've got to be persistent 24-7. Mindfulness is what reminds you of what's important, what's not important, what's skillful and what's not. And then getting the mind into concentration is actual practice in doing this. Letting go of everything that's not relevant to the breath right now. And seeing how well you can stick with that. These are the four qualities that support your strength of discernment. The discernment that realizes that wealth does not align having lots of things, or lots of different minds. It's like your mind is divided up into lots of little things. It's this part of the mind is holding on to that, that part of the mind is holding on to this, and as the mind gets divided up like this, each part gets weaker and weaker and weaker. It's when the mind is whole that it's strong. It's like fruit in the market. In Thailand, the most prized fruit is durian. And there's a part of the year when durian is extremely expensive, because there's very few of them in the market. But then when there's lots of durian in the market, it gets thrown away even to the dogs. It's the same with the mind. If the mind is one, it's like having one durian in the entire market. It's going to, be, it's going to command a high price. The mind has a lot of value when it's one. There's a sense of well-being that it can't have when it's divided up into a lot of little things. And so you want to appreciate the value of that oneness. That's a large part of discernment. You can't really divide right view from right concentration. It's possible to read the texts and learn about what the Buddha said about how this is not self and that is not self and decide that you agree. But when the time actually comes and you find yourself holding on to these things that you agreed were not self, you have to ask yourself why. It's because you, your concentration wasn't strong enough. You didn't have the practice in letting go. And you didn't have the appreciation of what it's like to have a mind that is truly one. So work on your strength of discernment, because that's what's going to carry you through, and work on these other four qualities, conviction, persistence, mindfulness, and concentration, because they take, help take to what is true in theory and make it actually true in practice. <laughs>